Rise and Shine Rwanda, it's Wednesday the 12th of September. Good morning, it's just after 7 o'clock in the morning and you're watching Rise and Shine Rwanda with me, Regis Isheja. And me, Fidel Skangwa. And over the next hour, we'll bring you the latest news in business, sports and lifestyle. And Fidelis is in the building. What do you have in the world of the money? <laughs> well, in the money, we get to talk about how prices for different commodities are finally going down. So good news for all the shoppers here in Kigali. Hmm. <laughs> you know, we've been hearing about <laughs> inflation. Especially food stuff. Especially food stuff. If, if you like good food, then you might be up I'm for I'm still some good going news. to, you know, boutiques <laughs> and, you know, regular shops. And yeah. they're telling you. Yeah. Yesterday's yeah. statistics, it, national, right. in short, uh, national Institute of Statistics mm -hmm. released some um, interesting growth there about a seven percent rise absolutely uh, in our gdp sports, well right? something that's also going up mm -hmm. in our gdp is our gold medal standing our medal standing at the all africa games uh the indoor volley sorry the beach volleyball team won a bronze medal kudos to those girls uh randa is now ranked in the top 15 on the continent when it comes to medal standings talking about that cycling medal two more medals again coming in from cyclists and of course our countdown to the rugby world cup continues two days mm -hmm. to two and a half he's so excited about this world that's cup. all I mean, he talks about the, on social media he has a countdown with a you know I an think, image i think i should watch the first game just in your honor and be like this is for Arnold. but it's worth it trust <laughs> me <laughs> I, mean, I, I understand the atmosphere you sure. just come from the mood oh, oh, right, right, guys, well, all that and more <laughs> still to come but first rise and shine story of the day Crowned Miss Randa 2015 out of 15 finalists at 19 years old, Dorian Mungwa has been seen on all fronts promoting women and young ladies in Rwanda and abroad. This past July, she attended in Brazzaville Miss Festival Panafrican de Musique, a biennial beauty contest that takes place during FESPAM. Seven months after her crowning, we're taking a look back at a journey that has, seen, that has been truly unique. Take a look. It's been seven months since she's been crowned Miss Randa 2015. Dorin Kunwa, who was 19 years old at the time, has seen the world ever since and has represented Randa the right way. She's been part of many conferences and other activities taking place in the country where, as the reigning Miss Randa, her voice speaks volumes as someone who represents young women in the country. This past July, she attended in Brazzaville Miss Festival Panafrican de Musique, a biannual beauty contest that takes place during FESPAM. We're taking a look back at her journey, but also remembering the steps that led her to becoming Miss Randa. <laughs> It should be a great conversation. Regis Sheja, Rise and Shine Randa.
welcome to the show. It's Thank great you. to finally have you on the show. We've been running out. You know, I've interviewed you like in other places where you're attending other uh, functions as Miss yeah. Randa, but it's, you know, the first time interviewing you. This is a little bit, you know, you're very beautiful in person. <laughs> you're Thank very, you so very beautiful. All Thank right, you. so um, uh, first of all, congratulations, because I haven't been able to tell you that uh, in the past seven months. And then um, what has the journey been like, truly? Because February... Um, September, a lot has happened. You've traveled the world. You've seen other things. Um, what has been the greatest single thing you've done since you became Miss Rwanda? Uh, the greatest. Um, I'll say that a lot have happened, as you're saying. But um, the first thing, um, now I'm working with my train, Rwanda. It's a project that is doing the operations for cleft lip children. And it's really touching really really touching to see those children and it's it's something that i can tell that touched me a lot seeing them there crying and all that and then after seeing them smile with no cleft on their lips so it's the greatest thing we had miss yeah. world king actually come here yeah. a good friend of yours who is yeah. talking about it as well she's in uh, invested in the same cause now um you know you're flying out of the country next week um, me while doing my research and we always read the news here um, you went to Brazzaville in July uh, during FESPAM now what has, what has it been like to actually wear the crown go out of the country represent Rwanda you know you're like basically an ambassador just like a regular ambassador is yeah. uh, wha what has it been like uh, it's not easy because when you're there you're representing the dignity of your country right. you're representing a lot but also it's amazing to see yourself um, doing something for development of your country and also meeting new people new knowing about other cultures so it's it's really good all right now yeah. uh the support you've been getting i mean uh at the functions we've been meeting i've been there covering you're there as a guest of honor i mean you've had to do a lot of things you know events where the president is where uh, other foreign um you know important personalities are uh, has it been a little bit does it take you aback a little bit you feel like whoa i don't really necessarily belong in this room it's a bit too much how has it been like uh yeah sometimes you feel like that because you know the world where, we where you were and then the world you're in today it's really totally different so sometimes you feel like oh this is kind of too much for me you get to meet people like from all walks of life right yeah it's been amazing now yeah. you you're uh, visiting Germany uh, starting next week. Uh, what's what's the purpose of uh, the trip? Uh, I'm going with Sebamed. It's a cosmetic industry. So um, I'm working with them. As you know, they were among the sponsors of Miss Randa project. So I'll look to work for with them after I come back here to Randa. Get that Sebamed check, girl. <laughs> I totally agree with that. Now, um, tell us in, in this, you know, um, c couple of months since she became Miss Randa, you know, a lot of people will feel like she has no other goals but being Miss Randa. I mean, this is, to most girls, this is as high as you can go, right? Now, do you have other goals? Is there any school goals, any career goals? What do you want to do after the, your term has run uh, its course? Um, I think Miss Randa is just a pathway to fulfill your goals. It's not the, the main goal. So for me, um, I have a lot, of course, I want to build a career, I have to study, I have to continue study, and I, I, have, I have a dream more than Miss Randa. Right. So um, I would say that actually after Miss Randa, that's when I'll be studying the real goal and fulfilling my dreams. Now the young yes. girls who are uh, watching you right now and their mothers uh, who are much watching the show and they're probably saying, this is a well put together girl. Um, you know, she's, she has her head on her shoulders. She knows where she's going. Uh, but there's a lot of girls who still uh, struggle with self-esteem. They have uh, issues with makeup. They feel like the more makeup you apply, the more beautiful you are. Um, they have issues with, you know, relationships, not feeling comfortable enough in their skin. What would you tell them? What to you is a confident woman? What to you is a woman with goals, with a vision, and who doesn't worry necessarily about how the world judges her? Oh, uh, I believe that our uniqueness is our beauty. Yeah, so... You don't have to look like someone else to feel like you're beautiful or to feel confident. So you are the one who has to build your, your confidence in you and in others. So I will tell them that they don't really have to compare themselves with others because they, there is a reason why I'm called Dorian and I have my own personality. 
and no one can come and replace me. So that's the same case for them. They have to feel like they are unique and they are beautiful and they are special the way they are. Now, um, most young girls, when they're you know very young, uh, at eight years old, nine years old, ten years old, they start envisioning their wedding and their wedding day and how they want to be dressed. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, um, did you envision being um, you know, competing in uh, beauty pageants and wanting to be a model. Is this something that was always in the back of your mind? Or is this something that came along slowly with you realizing that you were maybe of a certain stature, that you were uh, maybe, um, you know, your physical attributes will help you, to, will help to propel you uh, to that level. Was there any, you know, awakening moment? Or is this something that you always uh, wanted to do? Uh, it's not something I would always wanted to do. It's just something that came. Um, accordingly uh, but I would say that it all came from my dream because I like to inspire people or to see people's lives changing and I think this was one of the opportunities I had so I was like let me just try it. Yes. All right now after Seba Med, after you come back from uh, Germany uh, what else is next for Dorian Kundwa? For those who want to know what Dorian Kundwa is doing what are you doing next I mean during your tenure as Miss Rwanda? Um, I have a lot of projects coming um, on the International Girl Child Day. I'm planning to do something and people expect something from me. And I'm really willing to work with young ladies in Rwanda, whether I am still me, so after. So I would say that there is a lot to come, but I like to say things when they are almost there. Well, you've been yes. around the world. Uh, just clarify this for all of us watching. Are Rwandan girls the most beautiful girls in the world? Would you say that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> ah, yes, listen, that's, it says it all. Thank you very much for coming on the show. We appreciate you have, uh, having you here. Thank you and so much for the invitation. Hopefully you'll be back soon. Yeah, sure. All right, while well, you're watching Rise and Shine Rwanda, do not go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Here is to traveling and saving. Starting 1st of April to the 1st of June, travel with Rwandair and take advantage of our reduced fares and enjoy our world-class services in great comfort and safety. Fly our dream to the heart of Africa. Welcome back to Rise in China, Randa. Let's get to today's business stories. Fidelis Karangwa has the details. Business stories making headlines today. Tea, tea growers have been urged to ensure quality for their produce if they are to gain from the crop. Speaking during the graduation of 100 tea growers from Nyamasheke, Karongi, and Rutsira districts over the weekend, officials from the National Agricultural Export Board said quality is a must-have if the country's tea is to attract better prices on the international markets. The group had undergone an eight-month training program on modern farming and tea processing techniques as part of the government's efforts to boost production and quality along the tea value chain. Prices for food and other commodity uh, prices seem to finally be stable in the markets, in most markets and shops across the city of Kigali. As uh, of the past couple of months, prices of commodities like potatoes, cabbages, cassava and bananas had spiked up, causing fears, especially uh, among residents of Kigali. However, this may be about to change as market vendors say the price of some foodstuffs, including vegetables and milk, are expected to reduce in coming weeks as rainfall increases. And consumers in the region are feeling the pain of the weakening currencies, which has led to a rise in the cost of various goods and services across the region. The Tanzanian, Ugandan, Kenyan and Rwandan francs uh, have depreciated against the dollar in the past six months, setting off a rise in inflation and retail prices. Experts have attributed the fall in local market prices to a decrease in the prices of petroleum products in the world market, as well as the stability of our currencies against the dollar.
Welcome back to Rise and Shine Randa. Time now for your sports news. I'm an old quizera. Now, there was no dream end for Rwanda men's volleyball fortunes as the Zone 5 champions fell to African champions Egypt in the All Africa Games bronze medal match. Coach Paul Bitok's troops went a set down only to win the next two, but a comeback from the Egyptians denied Rwanda its first indoor volleyball medal at the African feet. Meanwhile, the beach volleyball duo of Denise Mutasimundu and Sharut Nzaisenga won bronze after a straight set victory over the Kenyan pair. East African Military Games champions APR Handball Club maintained their quest for the National League title with a 35-18 victory over Group Scolari Rambura. The Army side with three games in hand and nine points off table leaders and defending champions Police Handball Club who are tops with 48 points. Gilbert Mion Shuti scored a game high nine goals for the Army side. And finally, rugby. England hooker Ben, Young, ben Youngs has stated that the hosts need to come out firing if they are to avoid an upset in their opening day fixture against Fiji. The Red Rows are grouped in a potential group of death with six nation rivals Wales and rugby championship winners Australia in a group that has four of the five teams in the top nine in the world. Uruguay are expected to be the whooping boys of the pool. All right, Arnold, so um, Zone 5 Championship, it didn't end for volleyball as it did in Brazzaville uh, for cycling, for example. Uh, is volleyball one of the sports you can say is actually doing well in Rwanda, or do we have problems there as it is in football, for example? Um, volleyball has its start and stop phase, start and stop. Uh, they seem to get it right uh, at some moments, but then they're not leapfrogging that, and that you can put it down, I think, to uh, the mental capabilities, uh, the mental capabilities of the players. Because when you look at first, let's look at their group. They lost against Ghana. We don't expect to, to, lo to, to, to lose to against, lose against, oh, really? against so Ghana, at this, Ghana at this level. All right. yeah, then they came out and lost to uh, Algeria. But they beat the defending champions, Cameroon, you know. Which you said earlier yes. during one of our shows that yeah. based on our performances in Egypt, you didn't expect us to beat Cameroon. Yes, because we lost to Cameroon in Egypt right. uh, in that uh, sixth, seventh place uh, uh, final game, which made us finish the seventh. But uh, when you look, it, I think it's more of a mental block when it right. comes to the national volleyball team. They have a few professional players. When you look at Yannick Guma, when you look at Christopher Mukunzi, who had a game high 16 points in, in that game. Uh, when you look at um, the likes of uh, Yvonne Ma Mahoro, who plays professionally in Russia, they tend to be a step above. But the rest of the players have the talent. They are up there with, with the professional players. Uh, but they tend... Uh, when it matters most, uh, they tend to have a mental blockage against the likes of Cameroon, against the likes of Egypt, Algeria, which are not better teams, but... They're still that complex, because you talked about it yes. earlier when you said when we're facing Northern African nations, yeah. uh, Maghreb nations, like yes. Morocco, Algeria, Algeria Egypt, Egypt, we tend to be... W is it the same for Libya too and Tunisia? And all yes, it's, it's, it's the same problem, you know, when you see us face Tunisia. Cameroon will beat Tunisia, we will beat Cameroon, but we'll lose to Tunisia. You know, that kind of thing. We are not... Uh, we are a better team than them. Uh, I will say we will have better chemistry than them, but the players don't believe that they can beat these teams as yet. And I think it goes down to the matter of fact that they don't play professionally. But um, Coach Paul Bitok has come up with a strategy uh, about by the end of this year, we're going to have about eight players playing in the professional leagues in Turkey, you know, in the United Arab Emirates, which are top-notch leagues when it comes to the volleyball world, right, right. and some playing in Europe, like Yannick Guma, who is going to move to Estonia. So... You feel, uh, you feel the likes of Nelson Murangwa, who is currently playing at uh, Rayon Sports Volleyball Club, the likes of Adolfe, who is also at Rayon Sports, will be moving out and it will give them great experience. And when it comes back to the African Championship, uh, Volleyball Championships next year, Rwanda will stand a better chance of you know, performing better than its current standings. Uh, on the continent and in the region. All right, with the Azam League looming, uh, the National Football League looming, APR yes. as the defending champions, do you give them 
um, I mean, do you feel like they're the main favorite going into this league this season? Of course, APR are the favorites. You know, <laughs> they have players in their on their bench who are starter who play for the national team. You know, when you have the likes of Patrick Sibomana who can't make his way into the starting eleven of an APR team, and then when you look at the players they've brought in to reinforce. They lost uh, Mujiraneza, but they brought in Jihad Bizimana from, right. from Rayon Sports. They lost, um, they lost um, Emery Baisenge, but then they brought in uh, Foste from also Rayon Sports. They recruited in the right areas. They're starting 11, and their next 11 are equally as good. And when it comes with their organization, they're the most organized team. Now, they have the likes of Vincent Mashami, who is the national team assistant coach as an assistant coach <laughs> at their club. It shows you how much depth they have. Ivan Mugisha, uh, the goalkeeping coach, sorry, Ibrahim Mugisha, the goalkeeping coach, is also top-notch material when it comes to the region. But uh, you can see this year's league, you feel, is going to be more competitive than last year's because when you look at Police Football Club, they have recruited equally as strong. They've brought in the likes of Hegeman. They've brought in the likes of Isaiah Songa, you know, who you feel are top-notch players. They've brought in eight new players, and they want to get that squad depth, both because they are competing at continental level and uh, in the national championships. And of course, AS Kigali have a very good tactician in Eric Shimi Imana, who you feel his tactical nose is up there with the best uh, um, in, in the country. You know, him and Andrea Kasambugo and Vincent Mashami are the best local coaches with no doubt. So you feel AS is going to be a three-way battle between uh, AS Kigali, APR police. Football Club and police. But uh, don't rule out Rayon Sports yet because, you know, despite their seven-time league champions, despite their disorganization, if they can play with passion, they have recruited a lot of promising young players, Kevin Muhire, Savion Shuti. These are promising young players who are part of that under-17 squad a few years back and part of the Isonga growth, uh, growth squad. You feel if the new coach brings back that Donade, brings back that passion in the team, a Rayon Sports can take, can take on any team on their day, but it's, is it too little, too late to bring in a new tactician? It's only time will tell. Now we're talking about football, but APR is also as good when it comes to handball. They're the team to beat. Yes. Um, would you say that's because it's, we're talking about the Army? Because you were talking uh, yesterday, uh, I believe on yesterday's show, you were talking about the fact that Marine is doing pretty good too uh, when it comes to, you know, sports. So is this something that has to do with the Ministry of Defense and how the Army is organized, basically? I think, I think it's, it's, it's no accident that Rwanda enjoyed its best sports tenure when we had uh, some few generals running our sports. You know, when you look at our African uh, Cup of Nations qualification in 2004, uh, the head of of the football federation was an army man <laughs> well, when you look at the volleyball federation at that time when you look at basketball a lot of uh, APR was involved in many of these sports and right. it tends to have a very different uh, uh, level of organization and that's something uh, last time when I had an interview with coach Andre Kasambugo at police football club he mentioned that that the organization at APR Football Club is different from any other club. It's and it's the same for every sport, handball as well. Handball, we're talking, we're talking about basketball, right. we're talking, you know, all their sporting disciplines, even athletics, their athletics club, it tends to perform so well because of the organization they have. Right. They have the perfect structures, they go and pick the best talent uh, out there. And you feel it's something they have put onto their uh, feeder team, which is Marines Football Club, which is also under the Ministry of Defense. And so the organization is up there. I'll be shocked if Rayon Sports Football Club can go on and shock them. But back to handball, uh, you feel Police Football Club have dominated uh, the handball league for a very long period of time. They've won six of the past seven titles in the handball world. But APR recruited right. They, they, they got the Police Football, sorry, handball club coach. They got uh, Jiber. Uh, Mion Shuti, who is one of the leading uh, goal scorers when it comes to handball. And they have just won the East African Community Military Games. So they have three games, uh, they have three games in hand. They're nine points behind. So you feel after those three games, they may suddenly be a point above a police handball club. So it will go down to the wire. That last fixture police handball club was a PR handball club on who is going to take this year's national handball title. Now, before we wrap up, something that's truly and really um, you know, close and dear to your heart. We're talking the World Cup, uh, the Rugby World Cup, two days to go. Can you even, you know, sleep between now and then? Well, it's, it's, it's back to those NBA playoffs days for me. <laughs> yeah, but right, the right. good thing is that uh, we, we only have a one hour difference. And luckily, the rugby fans in Kigali are as motivated and enticed to watch this Rugby World Cup. But you feel this is going to be the closest of the 
uh, the Rugby World Cups. When we look at the pool, we we're talking about today pool uh, pool b itself alone you know it has four heavyweight nations you look at australia they're the rugby championship winners this year when you look at england they're at home and the home team has always favorites and wales are also co-hosts uh, for this tournament and the welsh team despite uh, you feel it has uh, they've had uh, kind of a step back with the loss of uh, their talisman in lay half penny, uh, the number 15, who are at full back. Because you, you feel the likes of Riz Webb, who are going to come and fill in the Danny Biggers of this world. They're not at level with Lay Half Penny. Lay, Lay Half Penny is the best defensive fullback in the world. And he has a very material boot, if we remember from the days of the British and Irish Lions tour of Australia. Uh, he played so well. But Australia have been revitalized uh, by the return of, by the arrival of a new coach in Michael Chaker. Uh, he has maintained he has brought uh, a lot of optimism in that squad though he's yet to sort out his 9-10 combination we don't know who is going to start on the day between will Jinia, bernard foley uh, quaid cooper and nick phillips right. so that's going to be the tricky part for australia and then wells george north is back so it's going to be a very very tight group fiji not forgetting they have tikoratuma and niavaro and nemani nandolo the man from crusaders they're also going to be a force to would reckon you with. say this is we have 30 seconds to go would you say this is the group of death this is the group of death definitely but you don't rule out also the south africa's and the new zealand's of this world in the other groups even argentina may be a shock contender going by that win over south africa in Durban. it's still a, a southern hemisphere thing at the end of the day right being in the northern hemisphere i'll give the english welsh and french a chance this time a, a little one yeah the, the Le blues they have that magic they have that magic two <laughs> yes. days to go i can't wait we should watch that together we are watching definitely all right together. thank you very much arnold you're watching rise and shine randa do not go anywhere. News are coming up next. His Excellency President Paul Kagame has saluted the people of Rwanda for their e resilience over the past two decades as the fourth integrated household living condition survey was launched, showing significant decrease in poverty levels. The report, compiled by the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda and its partners, shows that some 660,000 Rwandans have been lifted out of poverty over the last three years, with poverty levels uh, re reducing by 5.8%, essentially raising hopes that Rwanda could succeed in eradicating extreme poverty by the year 2020. EICV4 was launched by President Kagame, flanked by officials from the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning, as well as various international development partners. 
the president explained that the positive changes in improving people's lives were a result of implementing policies based on evidence about the country's needs for economic transformation. Much as the head of state welcomed the findings on poverty reduction, he called on top officials to step up efforts toward ending malnutrition. Department Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Solange Ka Hakiba, has stressed the need for public health systems to be ready to contain disease outbreaks. Dr. Hakiba cited Ebola, which she said can ravage communities in, cases there, in case there's no effective system to contain it, like it was the case in some West African countries in the recent past. She made the remarks in Huya District during the White Court Ceremony for 128 third, grade, third year medical and cl clinical students from the University of Rwanda College of Medicine and Health Science. The ceremony is intended to prepare professional doctors through providing students with well-defined guidelines regarding the expectations and realities of medical profession. Dr. Hakiba called upon the students to actively engage in community-based health care to treat medical conditions. And in regional news, a court in Kenya has begun hearing a case filed by a United Arab Emirates woman who says she was seized by Kenyan special forces taken to Somalia and Ethiopia and tortured. Camilia Mohamed Tueni says she was accused of being an Al-Qaeda agent while on a trip to Kenya in 2007. Ms. Tueni was released uh, without charge after being detained for 72 days and was given no reason for her detention. The head of Kenya's anti-terrorism police unit denies the allegations. The case has now been adjourned until October 29th. Mrs. Tuweni is suing the Kenyan government for financial compensation and is demanding a formal apology for her treatment. Ms. Tuweni was born in Zanzibar, but is now a UAE citizen and no longer holds Tanzanian citizenship. And international news, North Korea says its main nuclear facility, the Yangbyon complex, has resumed normal operations. Yangbyon's reactor was shut down in 2007, but Pyongyang vowed that it, restart, it will restart it in 2013 following its third nuclear test and amid high regional tensions. The reactor has been the source of plant, platinum uh, for North Korea nuclear weapons program. Experts believe that if restarted, the reactor could potentially make one bomb's worth of plutonium per year. The announcement is, first, well, is the first official confirmation from North Korea that it has started operations at Pyongyang. However, a U.S. Uh, think tank say the, state, uh, the satellite's image suggested that work has commenced at the plant. The news came ahead of the 17th annual uh, anniversary of the ruling Workers' Party on October 10th, which North Korea is planning to mark with a parade. Okay, lots more still to come. We take a look at us hot right now our daily special section, hot topics and lifestyle, of course. We'll be right back. Here is to traveling and saving. Starting 1st of April to the 1st of June, travel with Ryanair and take advantage of our reduced fares and enjoy our world-class services in great comfort and safety. Fly our dream to the heart of Africa. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Rwanda. Now, Hajis, I understand you're taking over lifestyle today. What do you have for us? Well, there's a lot going on. You know, there's a lot that have been going on in Kigali. Remember, Saudi Soul was mm -hmm. not here not, not, not too long. Um, and now, you know, we have a huge band coming from South Africa. Are you excited? I am. Uh, we'll talk about <laughs> all that. <laughs> It is the festival that's on everyone's mind at the moment, the much anticipated Mutik Beer Festival. And as usual, we have all the details on what, is, on what to expect at this year's event. Take a look. <laughs> Now, 
Iki gikorwa cya Bia Fest kigarutse ifite ubufu nyinshi cyane. Muti kuki kimenye imenye nuko aho tujye kugikorera ni hagari kubera ko bwinshi bw'abantu duteganya kubona. Ni kuri 19 na 22 z'uko kwezi hanyuma amafaranga ibihumbi bitanu gusa yonyine akaguhesha uburenganzira bwo kwidagatura mu cyo gikorwa cy'imisi. Ariko buri munsi wose ni igiciro kirimo bitanu. We were looking for the perfect uh, artist that would represent the brand, Mutik, being a premium brand in Rwanda. So we looked for some of the best African artists in Africa to represent Mutik for this beer festival. So one of them is Mafiki Zoro. I'm sure you all know Mafiki Zoro. Uh, they're quite big in Africa. And I think the clear presentation of what Mutik is all about, a premium brand. We also have Lilian Babazi coming from Uganda. Um, one of the best East African artists. So um, basically what it is, we wanted the right artists to represent the team. And joining us in studio now is Julius Kayoboti, marketing director at Rally Ra, an artist and performer Albert Rudatimburgwa. Albert, a man of many talents. I mean, we've had you on the show before in another capacity. Here you are with your guitar. And I know you a while back, entertaining partygoers in Kigali, you know, having your band and all that. What brings you back to your first love? Man, it's, it's all part of the creative industry, whether it's political or, or it's, it's still creative. Right, right. You know, it's, sti it's things of, of, of that you feel that you like, that you, that you, that you yeah. I mean, so... so uh, and and this is the kind of stuff that you never forget, you know. It, it's it's part like of riding you. a bike, right? It, it's like riding a bike or swimming or or even on, on rollers, you know. Uh, I've done this before. Uh, wh when when are you inviting me for painting? You know, <laughs> <laughs> that might happen next uh -huh. week. You never know, Julius. Yeah. Um, the beer fest. I mean, since 2012, we haven't had another one. Of course, there's a demand there. Why hasn't then, then there been another one? Is there a particular reason? Uh, no particular reason. Um, it's just that we wanted to wait for the right time to celebrate with our consumers and our fans, and we felt that uh, this was the right time. Uh, there's a lot going right for Rwanda. There's a lot going right for us as a uh, as a company. So we wanted to we wanted to um, reward our consumers. Now, when you say a lot of is going right, you mean you know including music or mostly music. <laughs> Uh, including music. I mean, there's a lot, right? We, uh, some of our br other brands, we had a great run at uh, Primus Guma Guma Superstar 5, uh, which ended uh, a couple of months ago. We had over 50,000 people. Uh, and I think on average, we've been having 25,000 people at our shows, 25 to 30,000. So a lot of is going right for, the, for our company, and a lot of is going right for music. Uh, no. and, 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 and these guys, they, they were part of, of, of bringing back the lines. Yeah, absolutely. Mean, they, they outdoor campaign was just out of this world. They, they, these guys went cuckoo <coughs> on this one, you know? Uh, you remember the, the zebras like, like going oh popping right, out their absolutely. eyes, you know? Absolutely. The billboards have been very yeah. creative, hilarious, yeah. if I should say. Yeah. Here's the thing now, Albert. Um, to those who haven't heard you sing, who don't know you're an entertainer to begin with, what should they expect when they show up uh, to the fest? The best of the best. And thanks to Mutsik, you know, because, you know, yeah. he, he's calling that the beer fest, but actually um, he should be putting there also slash music fest. Yeah. Because, I mean, let me comment the, 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 the whole, their, their family, the, the, all of their brands, to, to Guma was, was Primus, but, you know, it's, it's like supporting, it's like giving it an environment also to, to uh, a, a, a living environment for, for music. Right. The Guma was a one style, and, and I'm so happy of what we're going to do with the beer fest now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just pure soul, yeah. you know? So uh, well, if people have never heard me performing, maybe they've never heard the Beatles or Jimi Hendrix, because <laughs> that's my generation. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, Julius, now, um, We've heard it, it's been all over social media, people are excited in Kigali. I mean, you know, a couple of months ago, Saudi Soul was in the country, 
big craze in the city. Now we're hearing you guys are bringing Mafi Kizolo. How, how tough was it to bring them in the country? And um, how excited are they to perform in front of a random crowd? Uh, it was not that difficult, actually. Uh, I, I told you a lot is going right in Rwanda right now. They've heard of Rwanda, and they've heard of everything that's going down here. And they were excited to bring it. So it's not even Mafiki Zolo alone. Uh, we've got Lillian coming back home. And when we say we've got the best of the best brought home, we've got the Nubian gypsies. Uh, gypsies. We've got that's amazing. Up, you know, with Sarah Albert. You know, this is... Uh, I'm, I'm like a fan, actually. It's, right, it's you'll be sitting by reclining and watching the show, It's right? almost like I did it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, a la carte. Uh, uh, like, yeah. I want this and I want uh, that. You know? <laughs> Play me that song. <laughs> but, uh, no, but... Uh, then we also have new up-and-coming uh, artists. We've got Mike Kaihura. He's, um, he's unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable talent. So, uh, so the style of music is, is, is a little bit... Um, it's good quality music. It's quality music. What I call quality music, uh, and that goes with the Mutsik brand uh, perfectly. Now, uh, to those who are uh, gonna be at the beer fest, tell them what what's on deck. I mean, besides the yeah. artists, uh, what are they looking forward <coughs> to? How are the activities gonna take place? Just give them, you know, a little um, idea about what to wh what they're gonna see there. And remember, there's some who weren't there in 2012 and even before. Oh, that's fine. Um, the Mutzig Beer Fest is a celebration of beer, and it's a celebration of good beer. Um, so that's primarily what it is. And to, to celebrate such an occasion, we brought the, the best musicians that we could find from all over and from, from home. Uh, so expect a good time, expect great music, uh, expect great beer. There's also going to be some food as well. Um, but most of all, what I would like to tell people who are coming uh, we've got a lot of buses bringing people over, so please do not drink and drive. And that's great. That's a, that's a really good way to approach it. And if you do have to drive, um, bring your friends, and for the driver, we'll have some soft drinks for the driver. All right. Now, um, when we're talking prices here, the tickets are going for how much? Yep. Uh, how long is it going to take? Well, how long is it going to take? It starts at 2 p.m., Saturday uh, the 19th and Sunday the 20th of this month, next weekend. Right. Um, uh, the tickets are only 5,000 francs, and with that, you know, you get transportation if you want to go in the buses. Uh, you, get, uh, you get a coupon for five draft kegs, uh, draft beer, and uh, you get great entertainment. So um, it's, not, it's our way of saying thank you. I like that. Now, our, uh, Albert, um, as, like I said, in the 90s, you were very renowned <coughs> for doing Sorry. classic tunes, um, one of them being... Uh, Papa was a Rolling Stone. You were really good at that. Can we hear a little bit of it? A little bit. Of it. Let me tell you also what we're going to do, be doing on, on, on in this, because le let me thank really Julius uh, because he, he, not just by being a fan, but but by making it happening. Right. Because he came to us and said, "Guys, I'd like to revive it. You know, I mean, at least le to share that with people who haven't, who haven't seen it." And and we told him, you know, I told Julius, uh, if I come back on stage. Be nice is we have everybody inside there, and and we'll have we have the Mutsau, we have people who know Budi, uh, other great musicians are going to be present. And we're going to have a, actually a big band on, on stage. We're going to be like around 10, 12, something like that. We have a horn section, we have a whole rhythm section with different drummers, with different uh, uh, the whole percussion system. We have different guitar player, different keyboard player, different performance singers, and it's going to be an all-star band, you know. And we're going to have just fun, and it's going to be playing. I mean, we're gonna. Feel it like it's it's Woodstock or anything like that or a big uh, you know. So when it comes to performing, man to man, it's so unjust, baby. You don't know who to trust, yeah. Cause your best friend could be your worst enemy. And your worst enemy, your best friend. I ah, like Bob Marley used to say, some of us will come and eat and drink with you. <laughs> but behind, you're back. Like, so on, on you. you. <laughs> Did he really say so soup on you? <laughs> it's actually a life lesson. I <laughs> know your secret. <laughs> so only can we feel it? Who that can fit? 
Lot of them worrying mm, Who the cow fell Lot of them worrying I say me throw me corn No corn no foul And I want to hear Cook, cook, cook Correct! <laughs> clack, clack, clack. Oh, this is the kind of stuff we're going to be. See, I'm not multi talented like you are. One hand of applause for what Albert is doing here. But this is great. But this that was, uh, I think that was the weirdest uh, Papa was a Rolling Stone that I've ever It was, it was, it was. Oh. Uh, it, wa <laughs> <laughs> it was the 3rd of September. That day I always remember. Because that was the day with love when my dad died. Yeah. I never got a chance to know him. Mm, I only heard but good things about him. So, Mama, I'm relying on you. Tell me the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Papa was a rolling stone. Come on, Julius. Don't be shy. Whenever he let his hat he was, was his own. home. And when he left, oh, all he left was us alone. Come the funk time from Minneapolis. <laughs> get get up! <laughs> get get up! Yeah, I don't want to sell it now. So Come on Sunday. As you Saturday. guys see, I mean, this is gonna be a huge party. You do not want to miss it. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, though, uh, Julius, any information you would like to share with the public about the big days, the two days, and you know what to expect, basically. If you're a kid, come with your parents. Right, I like that. That's huh? a great approach. Yeah, no kids, please. Um, <laughs> no underage drinkers, please. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be strictly reinforcing. Yeah, right, right. We're here to have a good time. We're good to here to have fun, but we want to have make sure that's uh, done responsibly. I don't want to harp on about this because it's all about fun and celebration. Right. But don't drink drive. Don't over drink. Just uh, no moodies, no rudies. Mm. Just Bashman crew. I Excellent. think that's uh, kudos to Bradley. Right? You guys are doing a fantastic job. Albert, last word. Uh, if if you miss that, I mean, you, you just just change country. Don't you wait to watch it on YouTube, basically. To, no, no, no. Yeah, right. go to Europe and join the other guys. You right. know the migrants. <laughs> By the way, nah. rain or shine, huh? <laughs> <laughs> rain or shine, ah, it's going yes, down. It's, yes, going, yes, it's yes. happening. It's happening, yeah. rain or shine. We yeah. like that. Yeah, no well, rock, guys, we, appre shine. we appreciate you guys right. coming to Rise and Shine to share the great news with us. Yep. We cannot wait. I cannot wait to see Albert, Mutar, Budi, Mafikizolo, all of them, you know, grooving and, you know, throwing it down. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I really cannot wait. All right, you're watching Rise and Shine Randa. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back, and it's that Hot Topics time again. As always, the Rise and Shine Run the team have been out and about gathering everything you need to know what's happening here and abroad. From what's trending on Twitter to the debates in your local cafes, we've got it for you right here and right now. Uh, guys, the first Hot Topic that everyone's talking about, I mean, I know I'm, I'm excited about it, is these two genocide survivors, Ruben and Levi Uni, who basically left the country at a very young age of seven and had to you know, seek refuge in Kenya. And since then, they hadn't returned to to Africa or Rwanda for that matter. But recently, you know, it, reports have it, or rather we've actually seen them, they've made it to New York Fashion Week. And they have these uh, designs that they say were inspired by their past. So basically them being survivors of the genocide and being where they are today. What do you guys think of that? It's amazing. That's what I call- New York uh, Fashion Week is definitely a big deal. Right, <laughs> it, it's a huge deal for those who are into fashion. Yes. But it's also the fact that it's um, a feat. It's a real, um, accomplishment coming from um, two people who went through horrific things mm -hmm. and now you know are standing on top of the world when it comes to fashion New York Fashion Week is the biggest thing in the world so I mean that's like winning the World mm -hmm. Cup but uh, while being an Af a country that no one expected I was going to try and like put in like, like, like a football anything. terminology but I, 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 I yes. sort of like it, it killed it. It's so let me just do it. In those, in those <laughs> you know, realms, yeah? but it's amazing. Don't try too hard for you. No, I, I, <laughs> I want people to notice that my football you no know, spirits actually yeah, but I, think it's not there, yeah. I think it's a great <laughs> achievement for them. Uh, they are the third uh, group of Randons to be at a Global Fashion Week. Remember, Matthew Rugamba was right. at the London Fashion Week. Shout out to Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, you're dressed by Matthew. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think uh, it should be an inspirational story uh, for 
you know, for everyone back here, back home. Uh, uh, from we are now producing ballet dancers on global stages. We are producing um, the countries having fashion designers on global stages. I think it's great news not only for Rwanda but Africa in general, especially in a time whereby uh, the world is looking at uh, these. The form of racism is growing again. You know, when you are a person coming from a diversified background, it's not easy for you to go through those perils in right, life. So right. I think it's a great achievement for the OE twins. And, you know, hopefully you will have them on the Rise and Shine couch. Absolutely. We can't, can't wait for them to come to Rwanda. I mean, this mm. this will be a milestone if we get to interview Yeah, them. I mean, it's amazing. always really nice to see someone who's taken, you know, a, but a bad background or, you know, a, a bad um, history and turned it to something beautiful like that and something that Rwanda in particular can be proud of. We're really proud of you guys. Shout out from Rise and Shine Rwanda. Now, the other topic that's actually a sad one um, is uh, we've all pr probably already heard about it about Edmund Kajir, whom actually we're hoping to have on the show tomorrow. So he's recently been diagnosed uh, with uh, liver cancer and is seeking help to go and get treatment uh, outside, outside around, actually in India in particular. And he's been getting a lot of feedback. People have been supporting, people have been acknowledging his request. It's gone to the level where even uh, Honorable M Louise Mushikiwa uh, took interest in the topic. And you know, basically, people are just trying to give their contribution towards, you know, this person who we've had on the show very many times who's contributed so much to and Shine Wonder. And, you know, wherever he is, he should know we have his back for all the way. What do you, what do you think? Um, I want to see more. I'm not, I'm not um, satisfied yet. I'll let Arnold give his piece. But um, this is someone who has become part of our family. First of all, he's part of the journalistic uh, mm -hmm. fraternity. That's number one. Um, but he's been on Rise and Shine many times. At times, you know, we've called him at the last second and he's dropped everything he had to sure. be on the show. So that's something we truly appreciate. But mostly, um, this is a fellow, this is a great guy. He's a, he's a really good guy. And it's really unfortunate this kind of thing is happening to him. It can happen to anyone, of course. Um, man, I hate cancer and I hope he beats this. But wh where I'm saying that I'm not happy is the fact that um, I want to see more done by not just the everyday Rwandan, mm -hmm. by, by authorities, by you know, people who have the pool and the power to make this happen. I mean, it's 20 something thousand dollars. Uh, to me, that's a big deal. But to certain people, mm -hmm. it's you know, like 100 francs for me. So yes. uh, I want to see more done. Uh, mm -hmm. this is, he's, he's an amazing soul. Like, this get to this meet him. This is obviously just one person that was dear to us and we already know. But they, we, ha we also have to acknowledge the thousands of other people whom we don't ha particularly know person, you know, uh, alive and who are also going through the same thing. And maybe the, the issue should be what is Rwanda doing to try and help these people to get the treatment that they need in Rwanda and maybe that's what we should push for even more. What do you think, Arnold? Well, I think, I think um, it's unfortunate what's happening to Edmund. He's a close friend of mine. Um, he's a true gentleman. <laughs> he, he is a true gentleman and he's one of the best journalists I've ever met or worked with on different projects. Um, Edmund, it's, it's unfortunate that we always wait for such incidents to shed light onto uh, what has become an everyday need. Now, recently the East African community decided that um, the cancer institute or cancer center for the community is going to be in Kampala, Uganda, which has one of the best cancer institutes on the continent, or the best in sub-Saharan Africa. But it so happens that, again, one has to take a flight to India to get the best treatment. Now, what does this say about our health services? Yeah? What does it say about our medical provisions? And what should it say? What reactions should come from the people responsible? Should, if fortunately we are able to collect this $23,000 for Edmund and he goes to uh, India by early October, let's say, what happens to that other person who can't afford or who doesn't have, who isn't in the same mm -hmm. limelight and can't have the same shout out or call to receive similar treatment, how are they diagnosed? Because Edmund came to be told initially that it's just a bacterial infection. And how many times does that? I lost a mother to cancer, mm -hmm. and it was a similar incident of bacterial infection, bacterial infection, until the last minute where they noticed that it was stage five cancer. And this doesn't only happen to 
uh, people in an elite class who are able to afford this or people who are in the middle class who can call upon friends to afford this. So I think we need to step up our, our health mm -hmm. services. Um, we need the people, the authorities responsible. There's no reason why uh, for a country that has 95% medical insurance, we don't have a cancer ward yes. in our country somewhere we can send our loved ones, you know, because $23,000 is a lot, lot, of, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And that's why I'm also saying, I mean, this is our friend, and it's unfortunate it's happening to him. Um, we'll have him uh, hopefully on the show tomorrow. But when you also think about, like Arnold is saying, let's say someone who lives in Nyamashike, someone who lives in um, uh, Rusizi, and who doesn't know anyone who's not on Twitter, who cannot, you know, if you who see... cannot go online and, and right. you know... Draft the same letter that he drafted, the same, drafted drafted the same message that he drafted. I mean, um, it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah, and I, I think mean, I think we've not yet done enough cancer awareness. You know, apart from that October month, where yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I I don't feel like we've taken the fight against cancer. And this is a disease that's ripping through and comes from the kind of products that we are using of late. Okay. What yes. we have on the market, yes. yeah, yes. you know, from the sodas to the beers to the cosmetics all these things to the flour we eat, yeah. mm. any of this can lead up to cancer, you know, in the long run if misused. But is cancer awareness being done? I don't see enough cancer drives, you know, from breast cancer, you know, to uh, fibrids that can affect the women. It's to even the men, because even men can yeah. suffer from breast cancer. To, to even having, um, you know, being aware of the kind of diet you should be, you know, um, I mean, having I mean, what precautions you, you can take to right. Yeah, so I don't think enough enough risk. awareness has been right, done, to, you know, towards uh, fighting uh, cancer in our country in particular. Well, well, hopefully we'll be able to shed some more light on this topic tomorrow. But right. don't forget, we love to hear your thoughts, comments, and feedback on what we're talking about here on Rise and Shine Rwanda. Tweet us at Rise and Shine RW. Like us on Facebook and send us your ideas for programs. Check out our Rise and Shine Rwanda YouTube page where you can catch all the shows and reports that we do on a daily basis. Find us on Instagram, Rise and Shine RW. We love to see your pictures. Or check out our Rise and Shine Rwanda website, www.riseandshinewanda.rw. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but we'd love to hear your feedback. So do let us know if you have any idea for the program. You've been watching Rise and Shine Rwanda with me, Regis Isheja. And me, Fidelis Karam. We'll be back here same time, same place tomorrow, so do join us then. But for now, from the both of us and the rest of the Rise and Shine Rwanda team, have a very good day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.